It's an astonishing political comeback, which has thrown the Republican presidential contest wide open. Newt Gingrich has trounced his rivals in the latest round of the battle to challenge Barack Obama for the White House. His victory in the South Carolina primary has left the supposed frontrunner Mitt Romney in serious trouble. Let's go live now to our Washington correspondent, Matt Fry. Matt. Well, Chris, uh, Newt Gingrich used to be the king of the building that you can see behind me, Capitol Hill, the House of Representatives, where he was speaker in the 1990s and led the Republican Revolution against then-President Bill Clinton. Nevertheless, the reversal of his fortunes over this campaign has been nothing short of stunning. First, he was the favorite back in December. Then he suddenly was down and almost out in Iowa and New Hampshire. And now he has trounced his main rival, Mitt Romney. He is, Chris, the comeback kid that just won't go away. I, I don't know what it looks like. Get used to this hair. It belongs to Callista Gingrich, third wife of the man who's shaken up the Republican race, defying all the usual predictions about voters in the Bible Belt. They may not like the fact that Newt Gingrich cheated on his first two wives, but they love the fact that he's a veteran warrior who channels their anger and pulls no punches. The American people feel that they have elites who have been trying for a half century to force us to quit being American and become some kind of other system. And the reaction, people completely misunderstand what's going on. It's not that I am a good debater. It is that I articulate the deepest felt values of the American people. But it is the debates, more than a dozen of them, that have made Newt Gingrich. You chose to start the debate with it. Don't try to blame somebody else. Especially when he uses them to maul his questioners. Here's the most recent example. I am tired of the elite media protecting Barack Obama by attacking the public. Even the women in this frame were delighted. They clearly hate the elite media more than they cherish Christian values in a candidate. What Newt Gingrich is riding is a wave of insurrection in the Republican Party that was first articulated by this woman in the last election. Sarah Palin may not be running, but her spirit is, and that has been Mitt Romney's biggest problem. You should, you should hear him when we win, I'll tell you. <laughs> Governor Romney has the looks, the family, the money, the organization. But passion and punch, missing in action. Here he was last night. We've, uh, we've still got a long way to go and a lot of work to do. Mitt Romney is moving on to Florida, the swing state that can make or break a president and where his big bucks and slick machine will come in handy. Wow. It's, always an up, it's always an uphill battle for, uh, uh, for me. But behind the perfect smiles, there is panic in the Romney camp. Your problem is that your candidate still doesn't connect with his own party. He lacks the passion. He doesn't channel the anger that so many Republicans feel at the moment. That, there's no question that he, that you, you have a point, that there is some desire to see more of that kind of passion that Newt has shown in some of these debates. He was a businessman. Governor Romney was a businessman for 25 years. He was not out there on the stump making speeches, talking to, you know, constituents as our elected officials. And so he's, he's not going to be like them. Newt Gingrich getting on a battleship in Charleston Harbor. Almost every candidate uses this vessel as a backdrop at some stage in their campaign, but Newt looks and sounds as if he belongs here. Well, Matt, what happens next? What happens next, uh, Chris, is that they move into the alligator swamps of Florida. Florida, as you know, is a quintessential swing state. If you can win Florida, you can win the presidency. It is also a very big state that's like a sort of double espresso of everything America represents. It's got minorities, it's got the military, it's got poor middle class people, it's got retirees from the northeast of the country. And it's going to be very essential for both these candidates to not just go and meet and greet and do the usual stuff that we've seen in Iowa or New Hampshire or even South Carolina, but to bombard the airwaves with as much money and as many ugly ads as they can possibly afford. That is already happening. And whoever wins that particular contest it is going to go on probably to win the nomination. So watch that space very closely indeed. And once again, we're going to be pitting Newt's passion, if you like, against Mitt's machine. And what the Mitt Romney camp is really hoping for is that Newt Gingrich once again shows his unfailing ability so far to, at some stage, shoot himself in the foot and implode. Uh, and what will the Obama team be making of this? 
Well, they don't know whether it's Christmas or New Year, quite frankly. Um, they love the fact that their whole playbook, their opposition playbook to the general election that will take place in November is being written for them by the other candidates. Mitt Romney, the guy who pays 15 percent tax, um, who was a corporate raider, if you like, out of touch with Main Street America, or Newt Gingrich, the unbelievably bombastic man who cheated on two wives while they were clinically sick. This is something that you can't make up if you're in the White House. So they're extremely happy the way this thing is panning out at the moment. But to the end of the day, Krish, as you all know, it all depends on the state of the economy. Watch that space. Thanks, Matt.